Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Brannigan. Uh, today I'd like to examine your tummy if that's okay. That's fine. Uh, for this exam, I'll get you to take your t-shirt off, please. And um, for the start, I'll, I'll get you to just lie back 45 degrees here. I'm just going to have a look at you from the end of the bed for a moment. First, remember the general observations that apply to any system. Apply these specifically to the gastrointestinal exam. Is the patient well or unwell? Are they awake and alert, drowsy or asleep? Is the patient breathing comfortably or are they dyspneic? An incentive spirometer is often given to post-operative <laughs> surgical patients to encourage deep breathing where such breathing can be painful. Comment on whether the patient is overweight, cachectic, fluid overloaded or dehydrated. The gastrointestinal patient may be yellow from jaundice, pale from anemia, have blue peripheries from cyanosis, or hyperpigmentation from uremia. Note also any areas of discoloration, such as purple striae, the bluish periumbilical hue of Cullen's sign, the sinister echomotic flank discoloration in Gray Turner's sign, or their hyperpigmented velvety appearance of acanthosis nigricans. If the patient is yellow or brown, look for scratch marks. Enteral feeding options include a nasogastric tube, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, and jejunostomy tubes. If present, note the enteral feeding bags that drain into these devices and their contents. Total parenteral nutrition is used for patients at risk of malnutrition who do not have a working GI tract. These patients will also have some form of venous access, such as a pick or some kind of central line. Note the presence of a bag or bowl for vomit. Post-operative patients may have some of the following. Note any drains. Note their location, their contents, and corresponding scars, which provide clues as to their purpose. Note also if they are open or closed, active, which means under suction, or passive, meaning without. A wound or scar. Know which abdominal scar corresponds to which types of surgery. Patients are sometimes unable to tell you which surgery they've undergone. If you see a stoma, comment on its position, its contents if visible, and any signs of any of the complications of stomas, which you should be able to list if asked. Note if the abdomen is distended. Note if there are any prominent veins, particularly around the umbilicus. Look for equipment or devices that are attached to or surrounding the patient. Comment on any gastrointestinal specific medications, such as laxatives. Is the patient on oxygen? If so, how is it being delivered and at what flow rate? Does the patient have a urinary catheter? Note if the patient has an IV line and if receiving any medication or feed intravenously, check the bag and comment on what they are receiving. Note any mobility aids around the patient. Note the location of the patient. For example, a patient may be on a general ward or a gastrointestinal specific ward or a surgical ward. Note any signs around the bed. Okay. All right. Have a look at your hands now. Can I get this pillow out from behind you, please? Inspect the tips of the fingers for tar staining, which is seen in heavy smokers, and for leukonychia, or white nails, which can be seen in malnutrition and renal failure. Can you lift your hands up in the air a little bit, please? Ask the patient to raise their hands and look across the nail beds for loss of angle. Check for fluctuance of the nail bed. Could you put your two fingers together like this, please? Let's see if there's a space between them. To perform Shamrat's test, ask the patient to oppose the nails of the index fingers of each hand. Look for light at the nail bed between the two nails. Okay, that's great. You can put them back down now. And can I get you to turn them over, please? Examine for stigmata of anemia, such as general pallor, palmar crease pallor, delayed capillary refill, Coilonychia or spoon shaped nails. Look at the palms of the hands for palmar erythema, which can be seen in both hepatic and renal failure. Also, look for Duputrin's contracture of the palmar fascia. The hands may show signs of sclerosis, such as swelling of the fingers, sclerodactyly, ulcers, or loss of bulk of the finger pads, or Raynaud's phenomenon. Okay. Could I get you to put your hands out like this and then cock them back as if you're trying to cock your wrist back as if you're trying to stop a bus? 
Ask the patient to raise both hands out in front of them as if they are trying to stop a bus. Observe for 30 seconds and note any flapping tremor around the wrist joints. This may be seen in liver or renal failure, as well as electrolyte disturbances in certain drugs, including alcohol. Look closer at the arms for scratch marks, bruising, petechiae and muscle wasting. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to have a look at your, close look at your face now, please. The eyes are examined for conjunctival pallor and scleral icterus. Much less common are the brown-green corneal Kaiser Fleischer rings of Wilson's disease, a disease of abnormal copper metabolism. Have you ever noticed any ulcers or any growth in your mouth? No. no. Note any ulcers that may be present, either around the lips or in the mouth. Cracked skin at the corners of the mouth is called angular stomatitis or colitis. Look at the tongue. White discoloration can be due to candidiasis or leukoplakia. The tongue itself may appear smooth. This is called glossitis and is due to deficiencies of iron, folate or vitamin B12. Examine the neck for a prominent left supraclavicular node or Virchow's node. This is associated with gastrointestinal malignancy. All right, uh, I'm going to have to get you to lie down and flatten your back now. So if I get you to sit up first, I'll put this down. Flat, I'll put that pillow behind your head. So you just lie down flat there. Are you comfortable there? That's fine. Closer examination of the abdomen is often the primary focus of an OSCE. If asked to examine a patient's abdomen, start your exam with general inspection from the end of the bed and then move on to closer inspection of the patient's abdomen. During closer inspection, you may more clearly see discoloration, especially Cullen's sign, Gray Turner's sign, acanthosis nigricans, or generalized jaundice. You may more clearly see feeding tubes and their insertion points either enteral or central lines for parenteral feeding. You will have a better view of any drains, their insertion points, contents and type. Scars will be more clearly visible also. You will be better able to examine a stoma on closer inspection. Note the location, contents, health of surrounding skin and any complications. Note if there are any prominent veins, particularly around the umbilicus. Look across the abdomen for pulsations, distension or any obvious masses. Most people have some spider nevi, but larger quantities may indicate liver failure. Note any benign Campbell de Morgan spots, which tend to increase in number with age. Move through the nine regions of the abdomen with superficial palpation and then deep palpation. Superficial palpation elicits tenderness and identifies masses. Palpation pressure should be limited to the light pressure of flexion at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. If tenderness is present, be able to distinguish between tenderness, guarding, rigidity and rebound tenderness. Deep palpation identifies and defines masses. If any masses are identified, examine them so that they can be described later to the examiner. Try to warm your hands before placing them on the abdomen. Winces and tension from cold hands may be misinterpreted as pain. If you find the abdominal muscles to be tense, encourage the patient to relax them. So Dara, I have to put a hand on your tummy now. Are you in pain anywhere? Yeah, it's sore down here, doctor. If the patient reports pain, Begin your examination as far away from that area as possible and move slowly towards it. Look at the patient's face. Their facial expression may be a better indicator of their actual pain levels than what they describe to you. Um, we're just getting ready for the holiday tomorrow. You know. Oh yeah, where are you going on holidays? In New York. New York, oh lovely. I'll ask how long you going there for. It should be a week. Okay, great. So Dara, I have to put a hand on your tummy now. Are you in pain anywhere? Yeah, down here. How did you get to hospital today? I got a lift. Oh, yeah. Who brought you or did you drive yourself? I, I'm my girlfriend. Okay. And is she still here? Is she in the, wait, wait, the waiting room? Yeah, she's... Okay. Next, palpate for the liver. Take some deep breaths. If a liver edge is felt, Thanks. note the consistency. The gallbladder is rarely palpable, but if inflamed, tenderness can be elicited by looking for Murphy's sign. The spleen is normally impalpable and has to be at least twice its usual size to be pop. If you do feel a mass, be able to differentiate between an enlarged spleen and an enlarged kidney. Okay, stop breathing deeply now. Next, blot each kidney. If palpable, note the size, regularity and consistency of the kidney. Feel for an abdominal aorta. 
To do this, align the index fingers of each hand with the most lateral point that the pulse can be palpated. An aortic aneurysm is pulsatile and expansile, and this may be palpable in a thin patient. It's going to tap around your tummy now. Percuss the nine regions of the abdomen, starting furthest away from any tender areas. Air in the bowel usually makes the abdomen diffusely resonant, but this can vary. A full bladder will sound stony dull in the suprapubic region. Fecal loading in the descending colon will be dull, as will any intra-abdominal neoplasm. Percussion is used to estimate the liver span. A normal liver span is 10 to 12 centimetres. Perfect. You can take your hands down now. It's going to do the same thing looking for your spleen. Percuss for an enlarged spleen starting at the right iliac fossa and finishing at the left hypochondrium. Okay. Now can I get you to take this hand here and just put it along your stomach? Yeah, just like there. To assess for a fluid thrill, ask the patient to place their hand sagittally in the centre of their abdomen. If ascites is present, the vibrations of the flick should transmit from the right flank to the left. Percussion is used to detect abdominal ascites. First assess for shifting dullness as shown. Okay, now can you roll towards me? Remember to percuss from the midline away from you and then roll the patient towards you. Thank you. You can go back to and flat. Okay. It's going to have a little listen now. Listen in the periumbilical region with the diaphragm until bowel sounds are heard, or for at least two minutes if no sounds are heard. Move your stethoscope to two centimeters above the umbilicus, to the left and the right of the midline. If present, renal artery stenosis is heard here as a systolic whooshing. Okay, I'm just going to do a little quick test for any hernias. Have you ever noticed any swelling just around the groin there? No. no. Inspect the lower abdomen for any bulges, particularly around abdominal scars. Ask the patient to cough while looking at each pubic tubercle for a cough-induced visible bulge. <coughs> right, now I'm just going to move down to your legs. Inspect the legs for swelling. Palpate for edema, which may be seen in deep vein thrombosis, congestive cardiac failure, or renal failure. Okay, that's everything so far. Thanks very much. Thank you.